Hello, I'm Ross Royden, the Vicar of Christ Church Kowloon Tong here in Hong Kong. Welcome to a special service for the Feast of the Annunciation of Our Lord to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Please see our Facebook page for the readings for our service and for more information. Search on Facebook for Christ Church Kowloon Tong. This special service is coming from the Chapel of Our Lady at Christ Church, which in common with other churches is popularly known as the Lady Chapel. It seemed appropriate to have our service for the Annunciation to the Blessed Virgin Mary in the chapel dedicated to her. As with our other services during this time, this broadcast is produced in-house, so I hope you will take that into account when watching and listening. However, all services in whatever form they take should be not about professionalism and performance, but about participation. We hope that this broadcast enables you to participate in some way in the sacred mysteries. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear what St. Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear what St. John says. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Collect and Readings for the Annunciation of Our Lord to the Blessed Virgin Mary. We beseech you, O Lord, pour your grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, reading from verse 10. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as shale or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the Epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 10, beginning to read at verse 4. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, as it is written in the gospel of St. Luke, chapter 1 beginning to read at the 26th verse. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob for ever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Today is the feast of the Annunciation of our Lord to the Blessed Virgin Mary. This is the festival in the church's calendar when we remember the angel Gabriel's appearance to Mary and his announcement to her 
that she would give birth to God's son, the Messiah. There are now just nine months to Christmas, and I imagine we're all feeling that, that they can't come quickly enough. Last Sunday was Mothering Sunday. As I said in our service for the fourth Sunday of Lent, Mothering Sunday is different to Mother's Day. Mother's Day in Hong Kong this year is on the second Sunday in May. On Mothering Sunday, we think both of our earthly mothers and our mother church. In other words, of both those who mother us physically and spiritually. Our service reminds us that our Lord himself was born of an earthly mother and for many years of his life had an earthly mother to look after and care for him. For many, this is where the Blessed Virgin Mary's role begins and ends. She gave birth to Jesus, nurtured him, and then our Lord took over. Mary ceased to have any role after that. For others, the Blessed Virgin Mary also serves as a role model of faith, like other role models in Scripture. This, at least, is an improvement on seeing her only in her role as mother to our Lord. This is not to suggest that that role was unimportant. At the present time, we are seeing just how important mothers are, not only in providing physically for a child's needs, but also in supporting them emotionally and spiritually during what is the worst health crisis we have lived through. It is mothers too who are bearing the main burden in looking after their children's education while schools are closed. One of my favorite painters is Henry Oswa Tanner. He painted several paintings of the Blessed Virgin Mary. One I particularly like is one of Our Lady teaching Jesus. Mary's role in our Lord's life was a significant one, not only in giving birth, but also in raising and teaching him. And today, the Feast of the Annunciation is a good opportunity for us to remember and to give thanks for her and her role. Another of his paintings, which I have in my study, is of the event we are particularly thinking of today. It depicts the angel Gabriel appearing to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Gabriel is depicted simply by using a ray of light. Mary is sitting, hands clasped, listening intently. She is young, but intelligent and aware. I like this painting especially because so many of the paintings and depictions of Mary make her appear fragile and weak. Now I realize that often she is depicted in this way out of a serious devotion and desire to show her submission to God's will for her. They are not, however, a true representation of the Mary I know. For me, she is an amazing woman who took on a role which involved a sword piercing her own heart also. A role that meant she would have to endure shame and misunderstanding from family and friends. Even today, there are those who doubt her virginity and call her purity into question. And all this before the hardship she had to endure as a refugee and in all likelihood as a single mother. Joseph apparently having died before Jesus began his ministry. This is a strong woman, and we honour her. But is this all we do? For others in the church, the Blessed Virgin Mary not only had a role in the past as our Lord's mother, and her role in the present is more than as a role model for our faith, important though that is. In addition to all this, the Blessed Virgin Mary is a, real, is a very real presence in their life. Our Lord on the cross said to the disciple he loved, Behold your mother. Was this a gift just to the beloved, beloved disciple or something more? For many of us, it was a gift of our Lord to all believers, as the Blessed Virgin Mary becomes our mother too. 
you, saw, you probably saw me take this from my pocket. It is a rosary. And for many Christians, praying the rosary is a vital part of their spiritual life. It is also much misunderstood. It is seen by some as an unacceptable form of devotion to Mary that amounts to worship and idolatry. However, as those who use it pray one of the most popular ch prayers in the church, the Hail Mary, they meditate on various aspects of the life of our Lord from his birth to his death. At our Lord's first miracle at the wedding in Cana of Galilee, the mother of our Lord said to the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. The Blessed Virgin Mary always directs our attention to her son and encourages us to obey him. For many, Mary, in a very real way, is not just an example of faith, but a companion on their spiritual journey. She is someone they can turn to for support, and yes, for comfort too. A mother, in fact. Today, the Feast of the Annunciation reminds us of the importance of mothers and of the need to value and support them in the work they do. The Blessed Virgin Mary shows us what it means to have faith, to trust and obey, as well as showing us the cost of discipleship and the sacrifices we too will have to make as we follow her son. But more than this, she accompanies us on our path of discipleship, supporting us, encouraging us, and comforting us when we need it. To Delhi, we celebrate her, our Lord's mother, and ours. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We confess our faith as we say together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our prayers today, we remember especially all those who are the victims of disasters, both natural and man-made. We pray for those who are suffering as a consequence of war, violence and hate. We pray for all those in authority, and particularly at the moment for those in China, Hong Kong, and throughout the world responsible for tackling the COVID-19 outbreak. We seek God's healing for all those who are sick or who have recently been bereaved. We ask that they may know God's healing power and comfort. We remember before God, doctors, nurses, and all those who seek to bring help and comfort to those who are sick and fearful. We commit to God any problems, worries, or difficulties we personally may be experiencing at the present time, praying that we may know the presence and peace of God. And in our prayers today, 
we ask the Blessed Virgin Mary to intercede for us. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Paul, our Archbishop, Timothy, our Bishop, and all your Church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Bless and guide our leaders, give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this community in all nations in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one Spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace, and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It'll become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Through to the vine and work of human hands, it'll become for us the cup of salvation. Yours, Lord is the greatness, the power, the splendor, the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. 
He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, Grant us your peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls wash through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Let us pray. God most high, whose hand made bore the word made flesh, we thank you that in this sacrament of our redemption, you visit us with your Holy Spirit and overshadow us by your power. Strengthen us to walk with Mary, the joyful path of obedience, and so to bring forth the fruits of holiness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.